Hey crazies, time is pretty fundamental to the universe. It allows for a sequence of events. One causes another, which causes another, in an endless chain of cause and effect. Cosmically speaking, all humans live in a shared now. But when you stop and think about it, that is inconsistent with time zones. If you're in New York, it's three hours earlier in LA. In South Korea, it's 13 hours ahead. It's tomorrow. But if you call a friend in LA, you're not calling three hours ago. If you call South Korea, you're not calling tomorrow. How do these two concepts of time coexist in our minds? Many of us have this issue where we have to switch our clocks twice a year. For me, it happens in March and November. And frankly, it's a pain in the butt, like every time. My sleep schedule is a wreck for a week. And I took a poll, so I know I'm not alone in this. But the fact that we can do this with our clocks at all just goes to show how arbitrary these numbers are. Time doesn't care what we label 9 a.m. or 6 p.m. It doesn't care whether we call it October or Skeletor. There are 10 days missing from October 1582, and everything is fine. But even if we stop switching our clocks twice a year, we still have one more problem left. Time zones. That's when our clocks change from place to place, which is also ridiculous. I mean, look at this map. One glance and you can tell this mess isn't scientific. It's political. All because we want our clocks to vaguely match the position of the sun in the sky? Why does sunrise need to happen at 6 a.m., give or take a couple hours? Why do office jobs have to be 9 to 5 everywhere? Yeah, what's the deal with- Not right now, question clone. I'm having a moment, okay? It's okay if I just- y Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll call you if I need you. Where was I? Oh, right. Cosmically speaking, it's the same time all over the world. Yet our clocks say otherwise. Why? Because tradition. Tradition! Long before we understood the fundamental nature of time, we saw patterns in the world around us. The sun rises in the morning, and it sets in the evening. The moon goes through phases. There are four temperate seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer. Or if you live in Michigan, almost winter, winter, still winter, and construction. My point is, humans are observant creatures. These patterns were not only interesting, they were useful. We could use them to measure the passage of time, at least vaguely. Eventually though, we would want to be a bit more specific and that would take some ingenuity. To the timeline. Around 3500 BCE, Egypt, Babylon, and China had obelisks with shadows that told the time. By 1500 BCE, the design was refined into the sundials we recognize today. The shadow essentially acts like the hour hand on a clock. These devices give us something we now call apparent solar time. But for most of human history, apparent solar time was just the time. Time was determined by the sun, which I guess kind of makes sense given how long ago this was. Solar patterns told us when to plant crops and when to hunt. The sun was the best source of light we had to conduct our lives. Sure, we could build a fire, but that's not nearly as bright as the sun. As the ages went on though, we built better clocks and things started to change. The first mechanical clock would appear around 725 CE in China. It was water powered though, so it had limitations. The first weight powered clock wouldn't arrive until 1283 at a monastery in England. This clock was so regular, the design became all the rage in Europe over the next century. But people still considered the sun to be the real time. So even though mechanical clocks were already more regular than the sun, they were considered inaccurate. Tradition! Anyway, let's take a moment to get some perspective on how ridiculous everyone was being. We like to think of a day as one full rotation of the earth, which isn't true. Actually, that's a bit dismissive. That is something we call a sidereal day. Sider meaning star. It's how long it would take your point on the earth to once again be facing the same distant stars. It's about 23 hours and 56 minutes long. But that's not the only definition for a day, and it's not the one most people use. When the sun is highest in the sky, we call that local noon. That's when the sun is due south for the northern hemisphere and due north for the southern hemisphere. You could define a day as local noon to local noon. We call that a solar day. As the Earth spins, it also revolves around the sun. For the sun to be in the same place in the sky the next day, 
the Earth has to rotate just a little bit more than you'd expect. You might guess this extra little bit is four minutes long, which would take our 23 hour, 56 minute sidereal day and make it a 24 hour solar day. But you'd be wrong. Solar days aren't always the same length. They would be if Earth didn't have an axial tilt and its orbit was perfectly circular. But no, Earth's gotta go and make things all complicated. The axial tilt makes solar days longer near the solstices and shorter near the equinoxes. To make matters worse, Earth's orbit is slightly elliptical, which means the orbital speed is faster in January and slower in July. This was no big deal when everyone was using sundials. We just accepted that's how time worked. But everyone had since upgraded to mechanical clocks and making one of those match the irregular sun is impractical at best. So the powers that be found a cheat, averages. The length of the solar day may change throughout the year, but they could just take an average of those and call it a day. Get it? Call it a day? I'm such a dork. I mean, literally, that average is called the mean solar day, otherwise known as 24 hours. This mean solar day is what us modern people would consider to be a day. It's not astronomical motion, it's completely invented. But that means it doesn't match the sun. You may or may not have seen an image like this before. It's called a solar graph. It shows the path of the sun in the sky throughout a year. According to apparent solar time, the sundial time, the sun is always highest in the sky. According to mean solar time, the time on your clock, this is where the sun is at various noons throughout the year. It forms a shape known as an analemma. It is a closed shape though, so things average out. Now, what they did back in the 1300s is they mapped out all of those variations and called it the equation of time. Mind you, this isn't something a regular person was using to fix their own clock. Most people didn't have their own clocks. Usually the local church had a clock and that was it. This graph shows the correction they would have to make when setting the clock at the church. Because remember, the sundial time is the real time. Humans are so stubborn. Tradition! So yeah, I mean, it took some time, but we did eventually let sundials go. In 1656, Christian Hawkins built the first pendulum clock. It was a hundred times more precise than its weight-driven predecessors. So by 1670, the minute hand became a standard clock component. The second hand wouldn't become popular for another 200 years or so. And this is right around when time zones became a thing. Hello? Hey, it's Mr. Beat. Oh, hey Matt. Railroads. What? Railroads are the reason why we first needed time zones. Oh, because it was when we first needed to know the time somewhere other than where we were? Yeah, I made a whole video explaining time zones and I go through the history of them. Oh, so I don't have to cover that stuff in this video. That's gonna save a lot of time. What video? But the one that I'm filming right now, the one you interrupted. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, hey, before I let you go, could you tell your viewers to watch my video explaining time zones when they're done watching your video and tell them they'll have a great time watching it? I see what you did there. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll tell them. Thank you. Uh, I'll catch you later or until next time. Oh boy, okay, bye Matt. So yeah, if you wanna learn more about the history and the politics of time zones, you should go on over to Mr. Beach's channel later on and check out his video on the subject. I put a link in the doobly-doo to make things easy. Anyway, by this point, people had given up on the daily clock corrections. From now on, the sun didn't give us the real time, our clocks did. Bow, Bow down, down to, to our, our clock, clock overlords. <clears throat> and we kept making better clocks. In 1927, the first quartz clock was built at Bell Labs, a huge improvement over pendulum clocks. By 1939, it was accurate to within 0.002 seconds per day. By 1945, it was accurate to 0.00009 seconds per day. That's one second in 30 years. In the 1950s, we saw the development of atomic clocks which were eventually accurate to the nanosecond. 
By the late 1960s, even the General Conference of Weights and Measures had given up on defining time by astronomical motion. The second is now officially defined as the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. We've accepted that time doesn't care where the sun is, so why do we still care? Why do we want noon to be when the sun is highest in the sky? Couldn't that just as easily be 1 p.m. or 11 a.m. or 6 p.m.? We change this during daylight savings time, what difference does it make? Why does sunrise need to happen at 6 a.m. give or take a couple hours? Why couldn't that happen at 6 p.m. or 2 p.m. or 2 a.m.? This might sound crazy, but hear me out. What if we completely got rid of time zones? What if we had one world time? You could schedule a call with an out-of-state friend or coworker and say, I'll call you at 1 p.m. and it would be 1 p.m. for both of you. If you travel across the country, you could more easily stay on your regular sleep schedule. I take daily medication, which is a nightmare when traveling. Yeah, sure, the pill app says that it's going to adjust for the time change, but it never works right, like ever. Seriously though, everyone in the world switches to UTC. That's universal time coordinated. Then we're done. We don't ever switch the clocks ever again. If the sun rises around 7 a.m. in London, then it rises around noon in New York City. If office jobs start at 9 a.m. in London, then they start at 2 p.m. in New York City. Instead of working nine to five, you just work two to 10. It's still the daytime. You just gotta get used to the numbers. I honestly thought this was gonna be the hottest of hot takes, but there are a lot of people in the comments of that poll on board with this idea. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, people want their clocks to match the sun, so I'm not gonna hold my breath. I get it, change is hard. We're having a hard enough time getting rid of the semi-annual time change. These time zones are like a compromise between where we should be going and where we've been. I think getting rid of this mess would be a sign that our concept of time was finally growing up. Anyway, what do you think? Should time zones exist or no, get rid of them? Please share in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to my generous Patreon patrons and YouTube members like Owen O'Sullivan, who's been supporting at the Einsteinium level for over two years. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. Dude, are you okay now? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, sorry. Some of you thought an asteroid's worth of dark matter in our solar system was a bit sus. Think of it this way. A single building weighs a lot more than the air inside that building, but the weight of the entire atmosphere is 5,000 times the weight of all human-made stuff combined. Scale matters. Anyway, thanks for watching.